My granddaughter Jocelyn is 10 years old. She is kind, empathetic, and compassionate. These are a few of the qualities that would make her a fantastic corporate executive, CEO, or board member. There's just one problem. Jocelyn does not see herself as a leader. I'm Carla Howard. I'm a corporate leader, a business owner, and a woman on a mission to help other women become more influential and promotable so that they can rise in their careers with confidence and grace. Earlier this year, I read an article by Heather Murphy in the New York Times titled, Picture a Leader, Is She a Woman? In that article, I learned that when asked to draw a picture of an effective leader, almost every time both men and women would draw a picture of a man. I was curious to know if the results would be the same with the people in my family, so I decided to run my own experiment. I asked my daughter Bailey, who is 30 years old, my daughter Jill, who's 27, and Jocelyn to imagine a leader and then draw a picture of what they saw. Here is the picture that Bailey drew. Now, as you can see, because for some reason it's labeled, I actually did not ask her to do that, <laughs> this is a picture of a leader who is a pastor and a man. Before I show you Jill's picture, I want you to know that I really thought we had a shot of getting a picture of a woman with Jill because she works with me. Here's Jill's picture. When I asked Jill to describe the picture, she said, well, it's a superhero. I said, great, tell me more. She said, sorry, Mom, it's a man. <laughs> Here's a picture of Jocelyn. Now, Jocelyn is holding her picture of a leader. And when I asked Jocelyn to describe the picture, she said, these people are moving boxes. And this man, he's the leader. We talked more about the picture, and I asked Jocelyn, do you think it's possible that a woman could be the leader of these people moving boxes? She answered me very quickly and said no because you have to be strong to be a leader. <laughs> the results cited in the New York Times article and those from my personal experiment are not surprising, given the statistics on women in leadership. If we look at just the Fortune 500, at the beginning of 2018, women held just under 5% of the CEO offices. So far this year, over a third of those women have left their positions. We are doing a little bit better at the executive level with women holding 15% of those offices. And when we look beyond the Fortune 500, across all industries, including entrepreneurship, women are earning just under 8% in the top earner category. You see, the further we move up the corporate ladder, the fewer women you'll find holding those positions. Now contrast those statistics with these. Women are just over 50% of the population. We are earning 60% of all master's degrees and roughly 50% of all law and medical degrees. So what could be causing this mismatch? One thing is certain, we have found a lot of people to blame. We blame men for failing to promote women into executive leadership roles. We accuse them of hiring leaders who look, think, and act like they do, and for choosing mentees who remind them of their younger selves. We blame teachers for not calling on girls as frequently as they call on the boys. We chastise them for asking questions like, how many of you guys know the answer, fearing that our daughters will not think the questions are also directed at them. We blame parents because we expect our daughters to be polite and follow the rules while looking the other way when our sons break the rules and fight with their friends. And we blame women because we aren't forging the right relationships, speaking powerfully enough, or asking for raises and promotions. All of us can see ourselves in at least one of these categories, and blame is not working. What we need is a combination of conversation and imagination because possibility always begins with imagination. To change the statistics on women in executive leadership, our girls and young women must see someone like them living a fulfilling life that includes leadership at the highest levels. Here's how you can make a difference. Run your own experiment. 
Ask the children, boys and girls, and young professionals in your lives to imagine a leader and then draw what they see. I'll share with you a tip that will help you with this exercise that I learned from my grandmother. When my children were little, she was a preschool teacher, and she taught me when they present their artwork to never ask them, what is this? And instead, ask them to tell you about it. You may be surprised at what you learn. Ask them, why is it that this image of a leader came to mind? What do they think their leader's personal life might look like? And if it's not a woman, do they believe it's possible that a woman could lead in that role? Ask them if they can imagine a woman being a wife and a mother and a CEO or a pilot. The goal of this exercise is not to say that men aren't great leaders. Boys should absolutely see themselves as leaders. They should also see women as leaders. And girls, they should see themselves as leaders. The path to more women in leadership is simple. It is paved with conversation, imagination, and possibility. As I was preparing this talk, I asked Jocelyn if she thought women would make great leaders. She got really quiet and thoughtful, and then she said yes, because they give you hope. My hope for each of you is that the girls and young women in your lives will see leadership as a possibility, that more women will decide to lead our organizations, churches, and nonprofits, and that we will move away from blame and shift to a more balanced gender representation in executive leadership through imagination and visualization. Talk about leadership with the important people in your lives. Ask them to draw a picture of a leader. Is it a picture of a woman? Start the conversation because this is how real change happens. Thank you.